Sometimes you find something in a video game that makes you want to clean out your eyes. This is why today we're diving into 10 of the craziest pieces of cut content found in video games. Super Mario World Super Mario World is known by many as a childhood classic and a family-friendly game. Though when the biggest leak ever of Nintendo source codes and prototypes for many of their games were dumped online in June 2020, that opinion may have changed. While I covered many discoveries from these leaks in my video 10 Craziest Discoveries of Nintendo Leaks with the Easter Egg Hunter, there was one that managed to slip by both of us, and apparently Nintendo, that has me completely at a loss for words, as they probably wouldn't be pleased to know about this one. As for some unknown reason, in the source code for Super Mario World can be found Kawaso Kun an honor thing from the Japanese manga series Usuran Des, who can be substituted as a playable character. Normally, I'd be inclined to believe that perhaps Kawasa was in the game simply because the developers were using him as a placeholder. But what really has me confused is why he has his wang out in several of the sprite images. That kind of seems like a risky placeholder. Now, whenever you play Super Mario, you can be content with the knowledge that originally you could play as an otter thing rocking out with his c**k out. You're welcome. Okay, maybe you didn't need to know that, but unfortunately I can't really take back that information at this point. Fallout 2 Fallout 2 is the second installment in the iconic Fallout series, with Fallout 2 being considered one of the best RPGs of all time. Throughout the series, players can obtain different statuses to their character which are portrayed by series mascot Vault Boy, who demonstrates what the different statuses are. Hackers were going through the files of Fallout 2 when they came across some statuses for your character that ultimately didn't appear in the game. One was called Tragic Reliance, which stops you from traveling by map because you can't stop playing Tragic the Gathering, as well as Alcohol Reliance, which features the Vault Boy getting hammered, which honestly doesn't seem too surprising for Fallout. What is surprising though is the version of the Waste Reputation, which is a reputation that features the Vault Boy sitting on the toilet while sweating and looking at a nudie magazine. The Reputation's description states you really need to get out more. Your sexual exploits have been, well, two-dimensional. Your character was originally supposed to have this reputation the moment the game started, and you would have eventually lost it when you managed to, you guessed it, lose your virginity in the game. That would have been a hell of a way of starting the game showing something like that, especially considering I can barely show any of it here. No More Heroes 3 Thanks to Cybel for submitting this discovery on the Odd Header Discord. No More Heroes 3 is the fourth installment in the action-adventure hack and slash series, which both pays homage to and pokes fun at pop culture media, such as Rocky and Marvel films. At one point in the game during the boss battle with Sonic Juice, Travis admits that he hates RPGs because of one popular RPG series in particular, yet the name of the game is actually censored. So this is RPG style, huh? This made me break my damn controller, so... As well as Travis's complaint that the characters look something. What reason could you have to be so stubborn about it? Because the characters look f***ing... The characters look... The characters look... Whatever word that's supposed to be. What game Travis is referring to is made more confusing considering it seems to be only three characters. But Cybel managed to find the answer by digging into the files and find an uncensored version of the audio, where now it's clear he was ripping hard into Final Fantasy VI. FF6 made me break my damn controller, so... Leading into more smack talk about Final Fantasy VII. Even if they remake it, I'm not going anywhere near FF7. While it's obvious this was probably censored for copyright reasons, why the second part is censored is a little more confusing, considering the word he used, God forbid, is actually the word stupid. Because the characters look f***ing stupid. The characters look stupid. An especially weird choice because with the censored audio, the scene kind of loses a lot of context or any sense at all, unless he was worried about the developer sending him to his room. Whereas the uncensored audio of Travis telling us how he really feels about the franchise is actually quite hilarious. You know, you're right. He looks so stupid. I had been totally blind to that. Well, don't beat yourself up over it. It can be two things. Everyone and their mom seems to worship FF7. And at the same time, the characters do look stupid as sh**. You are really something, Travis. Observer. Thanks to Thanks Dude for submitting this through the Onheader Discord. Observer is one of my favorite titles of the last console generation, where you play as an Observer in 2084, which is a detective that can hack into the disjointed memories of corpses in order to piece together the events leading up to the crime scene. Thanks Dude was in one of those memories during a sequence where you chase a spinning TV thing, distorting the screen that eventually comes to a stop and teleports you to another area. 
When the object came to a stop though, thanks dude noticed there was still a whole area behind the object and crawled underneath the corner so they could bypass where the object would normally lift them away. On the other side of the object, thanks dude discovered a pipe they could walk on that doesn't normally appear in the game. From here they approached a shower that would- Hey, get back here. When thanks dude was able to catch up to the shower, they turned around and found a corridor that doesn't appear in the game. That sort of looks like a falling train- Oh sh it's amazing that all of this was made but doesn't actually appear in the final game. The camera has a seizure and then we're falling through a strange warping geometric hallway that spits into what looks like a bunch of doors suspended in mid-air. Unfortunately, we'll never know where those doors lead because at this point you just fall into an endless abyss. Well, that sucks. Team Fortress 2. Thanks to anti disestablishmentarianism and Dad for submitting this through the Oddheader Discord. Team Fortress 2 is Valve's popular free to play competitive first person shooter that I've covered before for some rather uncomfortable discoveries. The most disturbing discovery, however, seems to have been uncovered just this year, with the game's recent source developer asset repository leak that happened in January. The source developer asset repository is a resource Valve provides to developers who plan to use their source game engine. Only after that developer reportedly attains a license for $2,500 and signs a non-disclosure agreement. The repository essentially contains almost all assets Valve's used for creating their games in the source engine that developers can use as a reference. Though often the most sensitive materials are removed due to images being leaked from the repository of 4, one of which I've already covered on the channel. The repo leak this time didn't include coveted titles like CSGO, Portal 2, or Left 4 Dead 2, but it did contain 60 gigs worth of every Team Fortress 2 asset created between 2007 and 2015. Valve fans were quick to tear through every asset of the leak hoping to uncover something about a major update or anything related to the elusive Half-Life 3, when they managed to uncover something else unexpected, as in the models folder under props underscore spy tech is an item that doesn't appear in the game. That's titled Russian Chastity Belt. What the hell? Turns out this chastity belt is one from the Adult Swim TV show The Venture Brothers, worn by the assassin Molotov C which is further evidenced by a reference image in the same folder that's just a screenshot ripped from the show. It's believed the chassis belt was probably intended for the Adult Swim Team Fortress crossover in June 2012, where players were able to receive items that were a lot less spicy, such as this robot chicken hat. At the time, the Adult Swim items were considered quite a disappointment thanks to Valve and Adult Swim both hyping up the crossover and only providing players with a stupid hat. Though if we knew at the time it was between this or players running around in just a chassis belt, I think I'd just be okay with the hat. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006's Sonic the Hedgehog, also known as Sonic 06, is considered by many not only to be the worst Sonic game ever made, but also one of the worst games of all time. The game was developed after series creator Yuji Naka left, and Sega decided to reboot the series as an attempt to make it more realistic and mature. Among the new directions in Sonic 06 was a convoluted time-traveling plot and Sonic having a relationship with a human princess. Wonder why Sega never released this one again. Another thing Sega seemingly tried to hide is this mysterious pigeon hat. Hatsun. Interacting with Hatsun, he reveals this secret message. Very profound. However, it was found in the Xbox Live Arcade demo. There are leftover text messages in the game that reveal Hatsun originally had much more to say, which my friend and collaborator Slippy Slides managed to hack back into the game. Hatsun at first insists he's a perfectly normal pigeon, then warns the player about being caught talking to pigeons and proceeds to get increasingly aggressive, telling them to back off, saying other pigeons will get suspicious and the player is asking for trouble by talking to them. Is Hatsun part of the mafia? Eventually, Hatsun would have revealed the strangest message of all, which seems to reveal more about Hatsun's true purpose. Go away, don't make me angry, or else, uh-oh. Pigeon mech Hatsun restarted in pigeon emulation mode. Coo. Uh, it's starting to look like Hatsun was originally intended to be a lot more than just a normal pigeon. Star Wars Jedi Starfighter Thanks to Sly Cooper Reload Coded for submitting this discovery on the Oddheader Discord, Star Wars Jedi Starfighter released in 2002 for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, with the game taking place prior to the events of the Attack of the Clones. The game was well received by critics and Star Wars fans alike for having significantly more content than its predecessor. Yet it appears that Jedi Starfighter was going to be even larger, as hacker and modder Sly Cooper Reload Coded discovered in the game is a gold mine of cut content, with cut enemies, cut missions, and even a cut easter egg that would have shown some droids chilling on a beach. Even even in the middle of war, everyone needs some margarita time. For some reason, the developers really didn't want us to see that one, as after the egg was disabled, there was a failsafe written to make sure it stayed that way. Though I'm not sure why, considering this easter egg is dope. Guess they really didn't like seeing this guy slack off. 
However, Sly Cooper's strangest discovery looks even weirder than a droid in its swim trucks. As by data mining the game, they found an unused minigame that when opened with Flash Player turned out to be a simple triangle firing at some sort of weird dude's head. Sly Cooper theorizes that perhaps this could have been the head honcho for the developers of the game. And if that's the case, I can't imagine this guy would have been pleased if he saw this. But if this guy is the one responsible for taking away this easter egg, I think the minigame is well deserved. Takeshi's Challenge Takeshi no Chojinjo, or Takeshi's Challenge in English, released only in Japan for the Nintendo Famicom in 1986. The game was made when Japanese comedian, actor, and filmmaker Takeshi Kitano decided to try his hand at video games, and if the rumors are true, got increasingly smashed on rice wine when he told developer Taito his ideas for the game. Which is evident, as not only is Takeshi's Challenge widely regarded as one of the worst video games of all time, but also borderline sadistic, as the game uses intentionally awful music, difficult controls, and never tells you anything about what's going on. From what can be pieced together though, you apparently play as an average businessman navigating Tokyo as he sets off on bizarre tasks in order to end up on an island that supposedly has a treasure, I think. In order to find this treasure, you apparently have to quit your job, divorce your wife, take hang gliding lessons, get drunk, shoot UFOs, punch randos on the street, as well as your wife and children. Uh. If that wasn't enough to drive players wild, you also have to give a stellar performance during an infamous karaoke level that uses the console's built-in microphone that was extremely difficult to impress. You can also unlock a treasure map by either not touching the controller for an entire hour or just screaming into the microphone, which isn't hard since screaming is probably what you were already doing. While the whole game maybe should have been content that never saw the light of day, there are some unused character sprites in the date of the game that were never meant to be found. As in the date of the game are sprites of a woman both in a bikini and another one of the same woman in her birthday suit which was found alongside sprites used for cutscenes, suggesting she was maybe supposed to appear in a cutscene in the game. It's believed it may have been intended for an ending that was scrapped from the game, which to be honest would have been a major improvement to the ending actually used, as after players had pulled all their hair out to finally complete the game, they were met with the message, you actually bothered to finish this crappy game? Sucker, don't take it so seriously. On second thought, not even a nude lady could have helped improve this sh Breath of Fire 3. Breath of Fire 3 is the third installment in Capcom's fantasy RPG series, released in 1997 for the PlayStation, again in 2005 for the PSP. The game follows the last human dragon hybrid Ryu on his journey to figure out what happened to the rest of his kind, meeting a cast of other human animal hybrids along the way. And players can see a bit more of these hybrid characters than they probably ever hoped for, as hackers discovered an animation you can't normally see during the regular gameplay. As on Mount Mernay, when Ryu runs into the enemy Sunder, the unicorn can be seen standing next to the water, asking to wait up because it takes him a while to finish. Some were curious what Sunder was having trouble finishing, and used to walk through Wall Street in order to enter the area from an entrance they weren't supposed to, revealing that Sunder was relieving himself by the water. The animation is even detailed enough that you can see Sunder do a little shake, which really makes me wonder. Why? With this discovery, I'm not sure which is stranger. The developers who thought it was necessary to put this much detail into a unicorn taking a wee, or the hackers who were really determined to see it. Considering the level of detail involved here, I imagine the developers were upset that nobody got to see their efforts, though I think seeing Sunder's efforts in full is a bit more upsetting. Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. Danganronpa V3 is a rather interesting visual novel about a group of high schoolers who are forced into a game by a murderous robotic teddy bear, who makes each student kill one another and get away with it at a resulting trial, or else be killed by the teddy bears themselves. It was originally rejected by its publisher for being too shocking, though it was approved for production after retooling, and has gone on to be pretty popular. Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony, originally released in 2017, contains possibly the most shocking content that can be found anywhere in the entire series involving the character Mu Iruma, who the developer described as being the naughtiest character in the series' history. As in the data of the game, an unused sprite of Mu can be found, holding a spiky, uh phallic accessory, seemingly waving it while screaming at the screen. According to the creator of the series, they made the sprite to use in situations where Mew would get extremely angry, but were forbidden to use the image for ethical reasons. And honestly, I, I think I see where they're coming from. Thankfully, this wasn't a scenario in the game, because I think I'd rather be killed by the robot teddy bear. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And if you know of any other cut content and video games that you'd like to see me cover, submit through oddhair.com, come join the Discord, or even send me a shout through Twitter or Reddit. And thanks again to Slippy Slides for helping get the footage in this video. Feel free to subscribe to him down below as well.
Shout out to Angel the Fox, Ash Photography, Bitwiff27, Chad Biscuits, Ed Moffat, Eddie Talkspin the Bleach Primid, Flex, Fox M Cloud123, J1221 J, Miss Arctic Foxy, Phoenix157, Rackman22, Red Team Medic, Riley S, Robert Eisenman, Roll Got Me Flua, Starcore2, Taryn Stock, Towerizer, and Chow Z for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.